MCAT 2017 CRAM, Biochemical and Biological Foundations of Living Systems. Passage 17, Do Artificial Sweeteners Increase Diabetes Risk? As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the questions that follow. Good luck and happy reading. Paragraph 1. The effect of non-caloric artificial sweeteners, NAS for short, on human metabolism is controversial. Some suggest that NAS may short-circuit metabolic pathways resulting in catastrophic consequences that range from increased obesity rates to higher cancer incidence. Recently, scientists performed three experiments to verify the effect of NAS on blood glucose levels and glycemic index. Glycemic index being a number that indicates the total rise in a person's blood um, after ingesting food, blood sugar that is, and how the host intestinal microbes may modulate this effect. Experiment one. Scientists compared the blood glucose levels of groups of mice that were fed an oral solution with three types of NAS, saccharin, sucralose, or aspartame. With three control groups of mice that fed on water, glucose, or sucrose. Their results show that mice that receive a type of NAS had significantly different blood glucose levels than the control groups. See figure one. Figure one, blood glucose levels for mice fed with water, sucrose, glucose, saccharin, sucralose, or aspartame for 11 weeks and then administered antibiotics A, which includes ciprofloxacin and metronid, okay, give me time with this one, metronidazole, Okay, or uh, antibiotics B, vancomycin. The triple asterisk uh, indicates that blue lines are significantly different from others. Okay. Experiment two. After 11 weeks, scientists repeated the same experiment, but this time prior to measuring the blood glucose levels, they treated the mice with two broad-spectrum antibiotic regimens, designated antibiotics A and B. This time, blood glucose levels of the mice that received a type of NAS were similar to blood glucose levels of the control groups. Results of the experiment are shown on Figure 1. Experiment 3. Because saccharin had the highest effect on blood glucose levels, the scientists then perform an additional experiment with two groups of mice. One group of mice received an intestinal microbiota transplantation from donor mice that drank a saccharin solution. A second group received an intestinal microbiota transplantation from donor mice that drank water only. The results of this experiment also show significantly different blood glucose levels between the two groups of mice. This can be um, viewed in figure two. Let's take a look at figure two. Figure two, blood glucose levels for mice that were never exposed to NAS uh, following transplant of microbiota from saccharin and water fed mice the asterisk indicates that curves were significantly different from each other. So here goes the saccharin um, microbiota transplantation glucose levels. And here goes the water microbiota transplantation glucose levels for the mice that were um, transplanted with these respective microbiota. Okay. All right. Impaired glucose tolerance, IGT, is a pre-diabetic state characterized by hyperglycemia. 
Based on their results, what can we conclude about the role of antibiotics and NAS on IgT? A. Antibiotics reset NAS-induced IgT and the these effects were induced by microbiota changes. B, antibiotics reduce IgT, but saccharin was the only one that increased it. C, NAS reset antibiotic induced IgT, and the effects are not induced by microbiota changes. Or D, antibiotics increase um, IgT and NAS lowered it. I'll give you a moment to think. All right. Okay, so the blue lines in figure one indicate that NAS, the artificial sweeteners, increase impaired glucose tolerance or IGT. The red and the gray lines Okay, as pictured here, indicate that um, the effects of the artificial sweeteners were reversed by antibiotics. All right. So the fact that NAS induced IgT is reversed by um, antibiotics shows that microbiota changes due to NAS exposure are the potential mechanism for the spike on IgT. All right. Which hormones are produced in response to hypoglycemia? Is it A, glucagon and erythropoietin? B, insulin and estrogen? C, glucagon and cortisol? Or D, insulin and aldosterone? I'll give you a moment to think. All right. Okay, so erythropoietin simulates the production of red blood cells. Okay. Aldosterone increases sodium reabsorption in the kidneys um, when there's low blood pressure. So this is out, and so is this. Estrogen, this, what is it? it's the sex hormone, and it is not directly related with blood glucose levels. So this is out as well. Looks like the answer is this by default. Let's just go ahead and detail insulin as well. Insulin production is basically increased due to hyperglycemia. Okay, as opposed to hypoglycemia. Thus, both glucagon and cortisol production are increased when blood sugar levels are low, okay, in the setting of hypoglycemia. All right. Assuming that their results reflect what would be observed in humans, similar in mice, what is the effect of saccharin exposure on blood glucose levels and complications associated with diabetes mellitus risk? Is it A, saccharin increases glycemic index and increases diabetes risk? Is it B, saccharin lowers glycemic index and increases diabetes risk? Is it C, saccharin lowers glycemic index and lowers diabetes risk, or is it D, saccharin increases glycemic index and lowers diabetes? I'll give you a moment to think. All right. Okay, so glycemic index indicates blood glucose levels. Results show that um, glycemic index was highest for saccharin. So the saccharin fed mice had the highest glycemic index. And higher blood glucose levels characterizes diabetes mellitus. Hence, their results show 
that saccharin exposure yields the highest glycemic index and therefore puts subjects at increased risk for diabetes mellitus. All right. The results of their experiment show that the reaction of the intestinal microbiota to saccharin interferes with glucose metabolism, which other body functions are likely to be affected with disruption of intestinal microbiota. Is it A, leukopoiesis, B, hemoglobin saturation, C, coagulation, or D, T, lymphocyte maturation? I'll give you a moment to think. All right. Okay, so um, hemoglobin saturation is determined by blood oxygen levels, here measured as the partial pressure of oxygen. T lymphocyte maturation occurs in the thymus, okay? Nowhere near the intestines. And leukopoiesis is the um, production of white blood cells, okay? Okay, so it's not any of those, but um, vitamin K is a precursor for factors linked with the coagulation cascade. So its absorption is linked to the intestinal microbiota, and that's why coagulation might be affected if the, um, the fauna and the, the flora, whatever you want to call it, of the intestine is tampered with, okay? All right. What is the rationale for performing experiments two and three? Is it A, experiment two suggests that NAS-induced glucose intolerance is correlated by alterations to the intestinal microbiota, while experiment three shows that the role of microbiota is consequential? Experiment three, answer choice B, suggests that NAS-induced glucose intolerance is mediated through alterations to the intestinal microbiota, while experiment two shows that the microbiota role is correlational. Is it C? Experiment two suggests that NAS-induced glucose intolerance is correlated with alterations to the intestinal microbiota while experiment three shows that the microbiota role is causal. So which choice is it? You decide. All right. Okay, let's break down some of these answer choices. First, consequential is something that happens as the result of something else, okay? And the correlational occurs when two events are linked with each other but do not necessarily imply causation amongst each other. Experiment two does not show um, that NAS-induced intolerance is caused by microbiota, okay? It merely shows that NAS-induced glucose um, intolerance is reversed by antibiotics, indicating a correlation of these two factors. So experiment two suggests that um, NAS-induced glucose intolerance is correlated with the alterations in the intestinal microbiota, while the transplant of microbiota exposed to saccharin on experiment three shows that the microbiota is the cause of development of glucose intolerance. All right? Okay.